over there in Exodus chapter 26. If we could get a historical content in regard to this curtain over there in Exodus 26. Uh, in that 31st verse, we find these words recorded. And thou shalt make a veil of blue and purple and scarlet and fine twain linen of cunning work. With cherubim shall it be made. And thou shalt hang it upon four pillars of shittim wood overlaid with gold. The hook shall be of gold upon the four sockets of silver. And thou shalt hang up uh, the veil under the, the, the tatches that thou mayest bring in thither. Within the veil, the ark of the testimony, and the veil shall divide in, unto you between uh, the holy place and the most holy. And thou shalt put the mercy seat upon the ark of the testimony in the most holy place, and thou shalt set the table without the veil. And the candlestick over against the table on the side of the tabernacle towards the south, and thou shalt put the table on the north side, and thou shalt make an hanging uh, for the door of the tent of blue and purple and scarlet and fine twain linen wrought with needlework. And thou shalt make for the hanging five pillars of shittim wood and overlay them with gold, and their hooks shall be of gold, and thou shalt cast five sockets of brass for them. Here, here, the history of this curtain, it was a purple, blue, as the text in Exodus says, scarlet. It braided, it was braided and embroidered. It was more than 60 feet in length, 20 feet in width, and was as thick as a man's hand. It would have taken 300 men to carry that curtain, and there would need to be a ladder more than 70 feet to hang it up. It was hung on a brass hook. The curtain was God's plan. It was not made to be a beautiful drape to decorate the temple. It was designed uh, to separate the holies of holies from the holy place. It was the shield and the sacred place, place that only the high priest can go once a year, the day of atonement, with the blood of the Lamb. It was so holy that when the priest would enter, he would attach a rope around his legs. And if that rope was moving, the attendants to the priest knew that he was alive. And if anything would have happened to him, they would and could drag him out because uh, no one would go, no one else could go beyond the curtain. In the Holy of Holies, the Ark of the Covenant, the cherubims was there. The Ten Commandments given to Moses was there. Aaron's rod, a jar of manna, the foundation stone, the Ark set on. Uh, it, it was where God dwelled and where God lived. The mercy seat where the priest sprinkled blood was there. But now, now with Jesus' atonement, the purpose of the curtain has now changed. Jesus now invites all God's people into his presence. The curtain, the curtain separated folks from God. That curtain uh, said who could and who could not enter there. That curtain said that you had to be male and you had to be a high priest, but that curtain was ripped. That curtain defined who you were by the law and who you were by your tribe. But when the curtain was ripped, it invited anybody into the presence of God. Uh, you must understand that you, you, you are now worthy to come before him. You now no longer have to have somebody else to make intercession for you. Uh, you, you, have, you have the authority to go to God for yourself. You don't, you, don't, you don't no longer need man to be a mediator because now you have the precious gift of the Holy Spirit that he is a mediator. You can now put your traditions aside, the rituals of law, the rituals of man, and you can now Go to God for yourself. And here it is. Here he is now that the curtain has been torn. Watch this. No matter what you've done or where you come from, there is room for you behind the curtain. 
And sometimes, sometimes I wonder, sometimes I wonder uh, if, if the songs we sing, we really understand the meaning of them. I, I wonder sometimes, or do we just sing them for formality or for form or fashion or because the tune sounds good? But, but there's a song that says, there is room at the cross for you. Uh, though many have come, there is still room for one more. We sing those songs, but, but, but do we really know what they mean because what I found out, not here, but some church I'm talking about the church up the street around the corner we have a way of sometimes categorizing folks when they come inside of the church. Uh, we, have, we, 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 we have a way of putting those who don't look like us or who don't sound like us or who don't act like us in this crowd. But somebody ought to remember where God brought you from. Uh, somebody ought to remember what God brought you out of Somebody ought to remember where God brought you from. Some of you got the testimony. You don't like to tell it now, but if you told it back before, some of you got the testimony. You were sitting in front of a bottle and you was about to drown your sorrows, but God spoke to you and God cleaned you up and God healed you. Some of you got here, you were almost strung out on drugs, but God saved you. Somebody got the testimony that you were homeless, living under the bridge, but God you where you are and God saved and redeemed you. Some of you said you wasn't fit to live but you wasn't ready to die but God seen where you are and he looked beyond your thoughts and seen your every need. Am I talking to anybody in here that's been through something and God brought you out of it and now you got the testimony that if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side. I know you're doing good now. Huh? I know you got some letters behind your name. Huh? I know you got a nice house over here. Huh? I know you're driving a nice car. But do you remember huh, when you were down to your last dime? Huh? But yet God still provided for you. Huh? Do you remember huh, when you almost lost your mind huh, in the midst of what you were going through? Huh? But right in the nick of time, huh, God kept you. I feel like preaching huh, in perfect Pizza because you don't have the right to try to categorize somebody else when you yourself used to be where somebody else was. We, we, we seem to categorize folks. But these folks over here, you're not, you're not pristine enough. You sit over here. Matter of fact, matter of fact, matter of fact, matter of fact, I'll get to it a little later in here. But, you know, matter of fact, I'd rather sit up uh, under some folks that, that's not that prissy and pristine. I, I'm going I'm, I'm to prove it to you a little later on because that's what Jesus did. G Jesus didn't walk with the folks that had it all together. He walked with the folks that had it all wrong. Jesus walked with the folks that needed to be touched, needed to be healed, needed to be... Matter of fact, look what Jesus did. The reverend woman that came back and told of his resurrection was a woman that was possessed with devils and demons. She was a prostitute. She was messed up. But God still looked at her and said, even in your condition, you're still usable. Huh? Matter of fact, you're that usable huh? that you can go back and change the foundation of the world by telling others that I rose from the dead somebody ought to look at your neighbor and tell them no matter what your condition is you're still usable by God yeah. he says he says here he says he says he says that uh, that, that the barrier somebody say the barrier the barrier was removed watch this that is the blessing of our faith that God begins to remove barriers in our lives. Now watch this here, the church, the church must be careful that we do not put up barriers that will keep people from Christ. 
I'm, I'm a help, I'm a help, I'm a help. I hope some of them li looking for listening to live stream because while we're trying to protect our religious institution, we keeping out the very folks that need to be saved and need to be healed and need to be delivered. While you so stuck in your religion traditions, you keeping out folks that need God. And God ain't never say be stuck in your religious tradition. He says you ought to go to the highways.